Hello, and welcome to the online worship services for Island Creek United Methodist Church, Mountain Point United Methodist Church, and Fancy Gap United Methodist Church. If you'll join with me in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, for this day that you have given us here on your earth. We thank you for being there for us in all the moments in our lives. We ask that you be with those who are suffering, those who are dealing with grief. And we ask that you be with so many of us who are still trying to figure things out and to learn more from your word. In your son's name we pray, amen. The scripture for today comes from Mark chapter 10, verses 35 through 44. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Conflict. A serious disagreement or argument, also to be incompatible or at a variance. To be in conflict is part of an ages-old tradition. There is nowhere on this earth or in our history where you will not find conflict. To engage in conflict is part of who we are as humans. We don't always see eye to eye with the person in front of us. So it should come as no surprise then that even the disciples were faced with interpersonal conflict. I recently attended a meeting where our district superintendent pointed out that the disciples come from all walks of life. There were white collar workers, blue collar workers, those who hated the government and those who worked for the government. They, much like ourselves today, had different life experiences. They most assuredly had moments when they couldn't get along. And this moment in scripture happens to be one of them. So let's unpack what is going on in this moment. James and John have come to Jesus asking him if they can be at his right and left side in his glory. They want a place of power, a place of influence. We see that all the time today. The urge to be the voice whispering in the ear of the one in power. If we think of it this way, their motivation in asking Jesus this question makes sense. I personally find it more interesting when you consider they first ask Jesus to grant their request before they tell him what their request is. 
it is a moment of manipulation, or at least attempted manipulation. Jesus sees through it. To the modern reader, Jesus' response might not be as easily or correctly understood. As with many of his responses, his answer is tinged with an underlying meaning and tradition. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptism with the baptism that I am baptized with? We today might think that Jesus meant his words literally. However, that is likely not the case. Yes, James and John were with him day in and day out, so they would have dined with Jesus and been there when he was baptized. Scholars today have made the convincing argument that what Jesus was referring to was not the literal cup or his literal baptism. The scholars point out that the regular use of metaphor Jesus uses combined with the understanding of the Old Testament traditions, tell us differently. They argue that the meaning of cup was a representation of the suffering that Jesus must and would face in the days to come. So when James and John asked if they would be, well, let me back up. When Jesus asked James and John, if they would be able to drink the cup that I drink, he's asking them if they could suffer with the same suffering that he would suffer. They respond by saying more or less, yes, we will drink the cup and we will suffer too. But when they say that, they likely didn't understand what would happen in the days to come. Jesus tells them, okay, it will be as you wish. But I can't let you serve on my right or my left because it isn't for me to decide. As a side note, James was eventually martyred at the hands of King Herod in Acts 12.2. So he did face the suffering that he told Jesus he was willing to endure. It is in the second half of the scripture when the conflict between the disciples really begins to come into play. Tensions are rising among the disciples and Jesus sees the problems developing. He is quick to call them together and ask them to talk about what has happened. We all know that the longer a disagreement simmers, the harder it is for things to be fixed. Jesus begins to talk with them and explain to them that they are looking at things the wrong way. You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. Verse 42. The people in charge want to stay in charge. The people in power want to make sure that those who are underneath them know that they are considered lesser than those in power. There's a quote that is pretty well known and is attributed to a man by the name of John Dahlberg Acton a baron from England in the 1800s. He said, power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Great men are almost always bad men. At the end of the day, this passage is here in part to remind us that it is not about being in power it isn't about being in charge. It is about understanding that Jesus' goal here on earth was the antithesis or the opposite of what the people expected of him. They expected him to become a king. They expected him to become a ruler. 
They expected him to make them be the people in power. James and John expected this. They expected him to be like they thought he would be. In fact, they made it pretty clear when they said what they said in verse 37, that they wanted to hold a place in Jesus' side when he entered his glory. But in his words in this passage, Jesus makes it clear that they were wrong. He makes it clear that his purpose here on earth was to suffer. His purpose here was to be a servant. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. So it wasn't about power. It was about being a servant. It was about teaching us, about helping us understand not only who he was, but coming to understand who his father was and is. And so this moment in scripture, this moment of conflict, is important to us today because it reminds us that we are not meant to be the ones in charge. We are not meant to hold power over others. We are meant to be servants. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Not to be served, but to serve. Do we hear that today? Do we understand that? It is a hard thing to accept the knowledge that we are not supposed to be what society tells us we are supposed to be. Our modern society tells us that it is about the rat race. It is about becoming more and more powerful, about getting ahead of the next guy. It is about being more powerful, more rich, more respected than the person beside you. That is the trap that the disciples found themselves in. It is the trap that we must face every day. And at the end of the day, we are supposed to love our neighbors. We are supposed to respect our neighbors. We are to care for each and every person here on this earth because we have to. We say we want to be more like Jesus, but how can we be if we do not listen to his words? I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as i have loved you also you also should love one another by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another john 13 34 and 35 love one another. Today I ask of you this. Don't be like James and John in that moment. In that moment in Mark, don't be like them. Don't be like the disciples were when they were so conflicted that Jesus had to calm them down. Don't become so fascinated with the idea of power that you forget to be a servant in our world. Don't forget that it is supposed to be about loving one another, not about the power we are conditioned by our society to seek out. When you leave here today, love one another. 
respect one another. Remember that at the end of the day, Jesus came for us all. He came to be a servant and a ransom for many. In fact is, he didn't have to, but he still did anyway. And that is his greatest gift, his gift of love. If you'll join me in prayer. Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the teachings of your Son, the words that he gives us, the words that he teaches us, the words that remind us that there are more important things in this world than what our society tells us we should want. More important things in this world than holding power over someone else. In this world, the most important thing that we are asked is to love one another and to love you. And that is who we should be as Christians. That is what it is meant to be, to be a Christian, to love one another as Christ loved us. And in his name we pray. Amen.